On today's show, we're going to do a branding audit, and then we're going to listen to Amazing by D. Quick. Stay tuned. This is Eshe Music TV, where we provide tips, tools, techniques, and resources to help you grow your ministry. I'm your host, Simone Henry, a music business consultant, speaker, and concert promoter. I do what I do because I believe gifted, anointed Christian artists should not be broke. Let's get started. So let's talk about doing a branding audit. This is something that you should do several times a year. Uh, some recommend doing it twice a month. I recommend doing it at least three, four times a year, right? Do it at least once every quarter. This We're still in the first quarter of 2020. And, you know, previously we talked about doing our goals, writing out our goals and deciding what we wanted this year to be about. Well, it's still pretty early in the year. And if you haven't been tracking your business, if you haven't been following your goals and following the plan to get to your goal, well, there is still time. We're still in the first quarter. Things have not ended yet, right? We're not, we're not in December. You still have time. So let's talk about doing a branding audit. When I say a branding audit, that means checking your visual branding and making sure that people are seeing what you want them to see. So that means Googling yourself, checking, you know, looking and seeing like, you know, when you come up in the search results, what are people seeing? If they click on a link to your website, what are they seeing? If they click on a link to your Facebook or your Twitter account, what is it that they're seeing? If you're, if you're trying to get new fans, you want to lead that fan, that potential fan, down a path where they come into your world and they are now full-fledged fans. They are, they're supporting you buying your stuff and evangelizing on your behalf. They're telling other people about you. That's what you want in an engaged fan. So if your social media does not give them the impression that you are somebody that they wanna follow, well, then it's time to, to correct that, <laughs> okay? Uh, if your website, does not have information on it that tells them something about you and gives them a sample of your music, well, it's a good time to correct that. Um, your website should have, you know, good keywords in it, good metadata. There should be a description of you in, in the metadata. And that's not something that shows up on the website. It's something that shows up in the search engines. When the search engines are indexing your website, it goes into this metadata area and it gets the description and it gets keywords from there. So you want to put relevant keywords in and you want to put a good description in so that when Google indexes you, that when somebody searches for you or or you come up in in another search that that description that shows up in google is something that you want people to see you want to make sure that your pictures look good that the links work and that there is a music player on your site that plays your music i was on an artist's website the other day and you know, the site was beautiful. The pictures were nice. Her, you know, her visual branding was just, was nice. Um, but her call to action was book me for a show. Well, personally, as a new, as a, somebody who's newly aware of this artist, how can I book her for a show? I don't know what she sounds like. 
and there were no players on her website to play her music. So I couldn't, I couldn't hear what she sounded like. Um, and I wasn't going to go searching. And I do do this sometimes. I'll click on the link. If they have a link to their social media on their website, I'll click on that link and I'll go maybe looking through their social media. But, you know, there were no, there were no songs on their social media accounts either. Facebook has a new thing where you can actually link a song at the very top of your profile, right underneath your, your picture. There's a cover and then there's your little, you know, profile pic in the corner. And then underneath that, you can put a, a, a song. And that song can link to your Spotify account and, you know, where people can play the song and add it to their playlists and whatever it is else that you want them to do. But unless you actually put it there, then that won't happen. So uh, make sure that there is some music playing on your website, not playing automatically when somebody opens your website. That can be very annoying if you're at work and somebody goes to your website and they get outed um, because the song played automatically. Um, so you don't want to do that, but do have a player on your site where they can play, play at least one of your songs, preferably the most recent one. Um, your, make sure you have a Facebook fan page. The posts in there don't really get too many people, but it is, since you are a business, and yes, you are a business, um, if you are selling your music, you're a business. Every business should have a Facebook business page slash fan page, organization page that tells the user something about you. Um, and that is good for collecting um, information about the people who like the page. Um, it gives you, you get access to the Facebook pixel, which you can then use on your website to track the people who are on your website who visit and see what it is that they do, what devices they're using, where they live. Um, you know, you can see, you can track what their activity on your website and determine what interests people the most about you. And you can start to accentuate that. So if you don't know what the Facebook pixel is, I uh, highly, highly, highly um, suggest you find out. And if you are interested in learning more about that from me, you can join my membership at eshemusic.com, E-C-H-E music.com. And I have a fan base builder course where I walk you through four steps of building an engaged fan base. And part of that is building a website. So, and, uh, and of course, being on social media and engaging people on social media. So on your Facebook fan page, so once you get it set up, make sure the post at the top gives some sort of good description of you, put a link in there to your website. And, um, and as you're scrolling down, get rid of anything that you're not proud of, <laughs> right? Make sure your social media is representative of you. Same with Twitter, any of your social media accounts. Go to Instagram, get rid of any pictures that you don't like, things that uh, are in your past that are not representative of you now. Um, because you want to present a professional image. you. Once you decide what your brand is, you want to make sure that your what you put out there is something that is um, that is representative that that makes sense for your brand. Okay, so I would like to gift you. Thank you for listening. I would like to gift you with my free branding worksheet go to eshemusic.com slash branding worksheet and you can download that for free and 
follow this guide and it will help you to determine what your brand is if you're not sure because as we said in the last episode that your brand is more than the colors on your website it's more than the logo that you choose and that you stamp on everything it's more than that it's who you are it's your unique story so um this worksheet will help you to craft that so go to eshamusic.com slash branding worksheet and you can download that for free. Okay, so that is um, some of the, the things that you wanna do as you're doing a branding audit for your audience. And make sure that you are presenting the right impression, that you're presenting a proper face for your audience. You know, you don't want them to see things that that uh, that you don't like, that are just not representative of you anymore. I will see you on the next show. Bye-bye. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves I'm saying Amazing, amazing, amazing.